Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Jesus is Lord and welcome to The Place Online. These are Sunday morning service here at What Culture. And we are so glad that you have taken time out to be with us and join us today for this wonderful service. Today, we're gonna continue uh, the subject matter we started last week. It's titled, The Path of Life. David said, thou will show me the path of life. And we started examining Psalms 16. And today we're gonna to look at a, a sub part in that, in that topic, how to recognize the voice of God, how to know God's talking to you. How do I know this is God and this is not my mind or this is something else? Okay, we'll begin looking at that today and by the spirit of God, you're gonna learn a lot, you're gonna see a lot and God God's word is going to be real to you. I want you to invite your friends, invite your family members, invite your colleagues, business associates, fellow students like you, regardless of where you're watching from, we're going to have a wonderful time in God's presence. We're going to listen to a song. Uh, it's, um, it's uh, a wonderful song. by um, It's sung by Elevation Worship and also by Heal song united two songs in one but nice combo you'd love it it'll bless you uh look forward to it after that would we'll pray and get straight into the word praise god Hallelujah. Changing for the spirit of the lord is the evidence is all around that the Spirit of the Lord is here. The atmosphere is changing now for the Spirit of the Lord is here. Surrender. 
Let me walk upon the waters wherever you will call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me when my trust is sweet of God. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you will call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. In the presence of my Savior, in the presence of my Savior, in the presence, in the presence of my Savior, in the presence of my Savior. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome again. This is The Place Online, and we're glad you've joined us for our service this morning. We're looking at the topic, the path of life. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we honor you. We glorify your name for you are holy, righteous, gracious, and kind. Your good and your loving kindness is better than life. We're gathered here today through technology from several locations around the world to feast in and at your feet with your word. We ask today that illumination, insight, understanding, information, instruction will come to our hearts and our minds that will be inundated with your word by your spirit that our lives be transformed, renewed, refreshed, healed, and upgraded for your glory. We thank you because Satan is defeated concerning your children and will live the life of victory you've called us to live. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Glory to God. We are glad you are here this morning. Let's turn back to the, to, to, the chapter in the Bible we began from last week, uh, Sunday, Psalm 16 from verse 17 to verse 11, from verse 7 to verse 11. It says, I'll bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My reigns also instruct me in the ninth seasons. I will set the Lord always before me because he's at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh shall also rest in hope for thou will not leave my soul in hell. Neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou will show me the path of life. Do you see that? This is David speaking prophetically about the Christ. And you know, when you study in the Bible about the Christ, you know he's talking more than Jesus. Because when you see, you study the word of God, you find that Christ means several things. At the place in person, our in person service here at What Culture over at Surprise Arizona, I'm inviting you if you live anywhere around the valley. Make it some time to visit with us or join us, and you'll be glad you did because we learn the Word of God at a very deeper level than we have the short hour we have with you here online. So I explained that when you study the Bible, you'd find that when you look at the word Christ, you've got to read it in context to understand what it's talking about. Number one, Christ refers to Jesus, the person. Jesus, the person, is called Christ in the Bible. Number two, Christ in the Bible refers to us, the church. Okay? So we are the body of Christ. Jesus is the head of the body. A head without the body is incomplete. It's dead. So the Bible says just as the Father has life in himself, he has given, also given to the Son to have life in himself. So 
Um, Christ also refers to us, the body of Christ, the church of Jesus Christ. So that's number three. Christ refers to not just me as an individual making up the body of Christ. He also refers to us collectively as the body of Christ. So Christ sometimes in scripture refers to the church collectively. Then again, when you study your Bible, you'll find that the word Christ refers to the power of God, the Holy Spirit. Like in Philippians chapter 4 verse 13, when Paul said, I can do all things through Christ. He didn't say who, he says which strengthens me. You see, so I said, when, when Paul when David was speaking here in the psalm, he's not just referred to, referring to Christ, Jesus the head. He's referring to Christ as a being, Jesus and his church. That includes you. So look at what he said prophetically. Thou will show me the path of life. Thou will show me the path of life. So there's a path of life for you that probably will be different for me and for someone else. And my responsibility is to find my path and walk in it. Because in that path is life and no death. In that path is all the blessings and all the tools and resources I need to function and fulfill God's purpose for my life. When man struggles, when man who's in Christ, I mean, begins to have so much difficulty in his life, it could be indicative that you are not on the streets of your life. Because you see, when you're on the street of your life and you hit challenges or you meet obstacles or hindrances on your way, the necessary tool required to surpass or surmount that challenge and move on will be available and at your disposal. And you know exactly what to do. So when you are at a place where you're at loss, you're confused, disoriented, you don't understand what you need to do, how you need to do what you need to do, it could be, I'm not saying in all cases this is, this is the reality, I'm just saying it could be indicative that you either have not found the street of your life, the path for your life, or you left it. Praise God. So it's important that you find your part because there's a part of life that God intends to show you. What are you supposed to be? What are you supposed to do? Who are you supposed to do it with? How's the outcome supposed to be? Do you know? Or you're just second guessing life? No, God didn't plan for us to second guess life and just live like the rest of the world. Doing try and error. No. No, there must be a definiteness about the things that we do, an intentionality about our decisions, our choices, our location, our words. This is God's plan. This is God's dream. And he's the only one qualified to show us. Why? Because he's our creator. He made us. We are the sheep of his pasture. He leads us, praise God. But today, I want us to look at the first, the first verse we read in verse 7. It says, I'll bless the Lord who had given me counsel. He had given me counsel. You know, the Bible says, in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. He says, God has given me counsel. David personalized the word. Then he says, my reigns also instruct me in the nine seasons. Nine seasons could refer to the, the ninth of your life. And when I mean the ninth, the ninth of your life, I also mean your down times. When you're not as productive, when you're not as active. You know, like Jesus said, I must do the works of him that sent me while it's day. For the ninth comment, where no man can walk. He didn't say no man will walk. He said no man can walk. Meaning that there's a certain time, a certain season. 
when our ability seems not to be available for what you want to do. And so you do all you can while you can with what you have. What I just told you is one of the fast track ways to live a successful life in this world. Do all you can with all where you are with all you have. Don't wait. Solomon says if you observe the wind you will not sow. Don't wait. Don't wait to start a process of buying your house. Don't wait to begin making arrangements for your baby. You say, but I'm not pregnant yet. Hey, that's fate. Decide the kind of baby you want. Go shop for the baby. Let the baby know you're expecting her or him. Decorate the room. Don't wait. Start with what you have, where you are. Do all you can and see God add on your can and produce a miracle that you so desperately need for your life. Same thing. You want to you wanna get into school, you want a graduate degree. Hey, fill the application. You say, but I don't have the tuition. Don't wait for the tuition. Just take a step of faith and see God act on your behalf. He says, I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. So God gives instructions. Instructions come from God. And you know, last week I asked the question, and I want to repeat that question. Who are you listening to? Whose voice are you hearing? Who's talking to you? Who's advising you? Listen, success has track records. Hallelujah. Success has track records. The person who's talking to you, has it done? Has it proven the word is advising you to do? Has it produced that result in his life? Has it been consistent with the word? You see, because you don't just take advice from everyone. Counsel, you see, the one Bible says in the multitude of counsel, the safety. Is referring to godly counsel. Why do you do the things you do? Who's talking to you? You know, the Bible tells us, let's turn in there and let's look at it real quick. And I asked, we start zeroing on, on what I want to share with you today. First Corinthians chapter 14. Oh, blessed be God forevermore. First Corinthians chapter 14. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Let's see what he says in verse 10. He says, They are, there are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world. Then he says, And none of them is without signification or significance. He says, There are many voices talking to you in the world. And you see, when you look at the Bible, the Bible is a compilation of voices, of words. And that's why the Bible tells us to study the word. First of all, it tells us all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable. Then we say, study to show yourself approved unto God. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 16, 3 verse 16. He says, study to show yourself approved unto God. Oh, walk man that needs not to be ashamed. I'll read that to you. The two scriptures I just quoted um, from Timothy. First one is in... Sorry, Second Timothy, Second Timothy, chapter, chapter three, verse sixteen. It says, "All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable." It says, "Scripture is profitable, profitable for what? For doctrine." 
Then it says for reproof. Then it says for correction. Then it says for instruction in righteousness. Instruction in righteousness. That's righteousness, the nature of God. We dealt extensively about righteousness a couple of months ago. I'd encourage you to go study, um, go back to those those services that we had on righteousness and study it for yourself. It is so informative. It has so much loaded with so much information for you. You don't want to miss it. So if this is your first time listening to us or, or you didn't participate in that service, I'd encourage you to go listen to it. But you see, righteousness is the way of God. It's the, it's the nature of God. He says, the scriptures instructs you in righteousness. Why? He says that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto every good work. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you, if you turn again in your Bible, hallelujah. If you turn again in your Bible, same Timothy. Uh, bear with me one moment. I want to show you another scripture there. Thank you, Jesus. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Second Timothy 2, verse 15. It says, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. What we read in 1 Corinthians 14 and 10, it says, There are many voices gone into the world. And I said, the word of God, the scriptures as we have it, is a compilation of voices. You may ask, so what are the voices that you'd find in the scriptures? I'll tell you. Number one, you'd find the voice of God. God spoke in the Bible. He spoke to man. He spoke to nature. He spoke to the devil. Number two, you find the voice of Satan, the devil, the deceiver, and his demons. You'd find their voice in scripture. Why will God inspire the holy prophets and apostles to document for us when Satan speaks so would identify when he talks? We can tell a man's character from his words. So number one, I said, God, You'll find the voice of God in the Bible. Actually, when you study even from Genesis chapter 1, you'll find his voice there. The Bible says the voice of the Lord came walking in the midst of the garden. Number two, you'll find the voice of Satan. Number three, you'll find the voice of the one who's unregenerate. The one who's, who's, a, who's not born again. Who doesn't know God. Who's alienated from God? You'll find his voice in the Bible. Number four, you'll find the voice of even canal men. They know God, but they spoke from the, from the motivation of their senses. You'll find that in the Bible. So I've identified for you four classes of voices. Then number five, you'll find the voice of spiritual men. Hallelujah. So five different voices you can identify from scripture. There's more. Number six, you find the voice of nature. The mountains speak. Do you know that? Trees can speak. Do you know that? The voice of nature is then the word. 
when they reacted to what God did, when they reacted to what men did, and certain things happened, they spoke. So when I studied the Bible, I realized that this book is a compilation of voices. And my responsibility is to identify God's voice. Now the question is, how do I know God's voice? That's what we want to learn today, or begin learning today. Turn in your Bibles to St. John's Gospel, chapter 10. Hallelujah. St. John's Gospel, chapter 10, from verse 1 to 4. And I, I hope that um, we can go very far with this subject today. Praise God. St. John's Gospel, chapter 10, beginning from verse 1, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, this is Jesus speaking, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth, climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Jesus said there's a protocol for entering into the sheepfold. There's a way to enter a house. There's a way to interact in a place. You don't come in through, the, through any other way outside the door. Verse 2. But he that entered in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Verse 3. To him the potter openeth. And the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. Mark what Jesus is saying. Verse 4. He says, And he put it for his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice this is very instructive because again i'm showing you number two a second pathway to live a successful life jesus said i am the good shepherd let me study down several scriptures down several, several verses down but it says the sheep, they hear, they know my voice. So if you still don't know God's voice, you're probably a lamb. Or probably you're not even born again at all. You're not in the sheepfold. If you're not in the sheepfold. We won't end this service without giving you an opportunity to come in. We'll always make that invitation. You see, because true success is in Christ. True victory is in Christ. Health is found there. Prosperity is found there. Peace, peace that transcends human understanding is found in Christ. And all you need is to make him the Lord of your life. And he's ever willing to take you in. You're the reason why he came. You're the reason why he died. And he wants you to accept that he did it for you and receive his life. He didn't give his life. He didn't die for himself. He died for you. And I'm going to give you that opportunity to give your life back to him. So he can take it and use it for his glory. Doesn't matter how abused that life is right now. It doesn't matter if that life has been destroyed or injured by drugs. 
It doesn't matter if that life has been injured by the things you have done to your body, by yourself, by your decisions, or through the environment you find yourself. That life right now may be ravaged by sickness, disease, infirmities of the body. It doesn't matter. He will take it and make it brand new. He will take it and make a success out of it. He will take it and change the trajectory of your life. He's interested in you because you're the reason why he came. You're the reason why he died. He didn't die for himself. He died because he loves you. John 3, 16 tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, doesn't matter where he lives, doesn't matter what he's done. It doesn't matter the circumstances surrounding his birth. It doesn't matter whether he's educated or not. Whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that life is available to you. In fact, before I continue, I want to give you that opportunity right now. I usually do this at the end of the broadcast, but I, I have a, a strong sense of urgency to do it right now so you're not saved you're not born again jesus is not lord of your life you want to give your life to the lord i want to put your right hand on your chest doesn't matter whether you're in the, the house you're at school you are at work doesn't matter whether someone's watching with you you've never ever given your life to the lord or maybe you did at some point but you journeyed outside god and now you're tracing your way back to your path and you want to give your life to the Lord or rededicate your life to the Lord. I want to put your right hand on your chest. I'm going to put words in your mouth and I want you to mean it with all of your heart. Repeat it out loud. God is where you are right now. Say with me, say, Father, I thank you for sending Jesus into the world. He died. He took my place. My place of shame. My place of sin. He was buried. And on the third day, he rose again from the dead. I believe in his resurrection. Therefore, right now, with faith in my heart, I confess Jesus is Lord of my life and I declare that God raised him from the dead for my justification so right now I receive eternal life into my spirit so thank you father for saving my soul in Jesus name amen if you said that prayer congratulations God heard you welcome to the family of God we want to meet with you we want to know you we want to help you as you journey and grow in God. Our email address is right there on the screen, prayer at whatculture.org. Ensure that you write us and we'll write you back. We'll let you know um, and send you tools as you grow and journey in the Lord. Praise God. Let's get back to the subject that we've been um, studying about. Um, Jesus said, he put it on verse 4. Verse 4 of St. John's Gospel, chapter 10. And when he put it for his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. He says they know his voice. So how do I recognize the voice of God? Number one, the voice of God cannot contradict the word of God. The word of God, let me show you a scripture in Psalm, Psalm 138. You deserve it all. From you are all things. To you are all things. You deserve the glory, oh, 
Hallelujah. Psalm 138 verse 2. He says, I worship towards thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. He says, God magnifies his word. He places premium on his word above his name so any revelation any vision any word any being that speaks to you that contradicts the word of god couldn't be from god so the first way God talks to us and through which we recognize God's voice is by his word, knowing his word, learning his word, growing in his word, and living the word. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Thank you, Jesus. Om the Shari Tequila Dama Kanen Galahista. Hebrews chapter 4. Thank you, Lord. Hebrews chapter 4. I begin reading to you. Let's read from verse 10. It's good, even though we're going to verse 13, verse 12 and 13. But reading from verse 10 is, is exciting. He says, for he that entered into his rest, he also has seized from his own works as God did from his. He that has entered into his rest. Whose rest? God's rest. He said he has seized from his works. Verse 11. Let us labor therefore to enter into He says let us therefore labor to enter into that rest lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. He says, when you are in doubt, you are not entered into his rest. Then he says, there's a labor, there's a fight, there's work. It's called the work of faith. He's not work trying to get God's attention. No. It's work holding on to the visions, the truth you have found from God's word. For example, the word of God says he made him to be seen who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I may not feel righteous, I may not look righteous, but I look at that word and I don't allow society define for me who I am. I don't allow my own actions decide for me who I am. I don't allow the opinions of men decide for me who I am. I choose to hold on to what God's word says concerning me. What am I doing? I'm laboring to enter into that rest. So now my righteousness is not because of my works, not because of my struggles. No, a thousand times, no. It's because of the finished works of Christ on the cross for me. Why? Why is he telling us to do this? The next verse tells us, verse 12, he says, O labora He says, for the word of God is quick, quick, quick. Uh, the word quick is the same word living. You hear me say this all the time. This is the scripture right here. So when, when I close my end credits, every service is the scripture right here. 
and bringing this reality to your mind, bringing this reality to your spirit every day. The word of God is living. He's alive. He's not dead. He's alive. Word of God, he says, is quick. Then it says, is powerful. So when God talks to you, it leaves an impression. God's word cannot be forgotten. No, it's stored in your spirit. Their words I heard. More than 20 years ago, they're still alive, walking in me, walking with those words. Why? Because it's the word spoken by God. It says it's powerful. Then the next one is qualifying for you the word. And you know, the voice is words, quoted. Sound quoted with words. That's what the voice is. It says it's not just living, it's not just active, not that's in other words, not just quick, not just powerful. It says it's also sharp. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, this is an instrument right here. It says sharper than any two edged sword. What does it do? It says it pierces even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. You see, this is one thing man has not been able to do and man cannot do. The word of God tells us only the word can do that, can identify the soul separate from the spirit. Man has invented technologies to dominate his body. So if you want a pointed nose, there's a technology available to make that nose very pointed. If you want to change the tone of your skin, there's technology available to make that happen. If you want to enlarge any part of your body, there's technology available to make that happen. Man has, inv has invented technologies to tame his body. You want to improve your hearing? There are technologies to make that happen. Your eyesight, technologies are there, available to make that happen. Man, the natural man I mean, has dominated his body. And he's gone beyond his body. And he's playing at a very high level. And the word of God does tell us in these last days, we're going to see increased activities of such things. So I'm not surprised because I know the word. Man right now, is playing at the realm of the soul and so he's inventing technologies to control the soul so much so the other day i read an article about a guy a certain technology with which you can capture record dreams images from your dream technology has so advanced but you see all this is in the realm of the soul because man the natural man the natural mind has not been able to understand that man is not a soul he's a living soul the man is primarily a spirit he has a soul the soul is the realm of his consciousness the realm of his emotions This is where he takes decisions. This is where his logical reasoning takes a hold of him. And depending on the information and where he's drawing information from, either from his spirit or body, he makes choices. The soul is the engine with which we can describe who a personality is. Bible tells us only the word of God 
can distinguish between the soul and the spirit. Look at it, it's right there. It says it pierces even to the dividing of the soul and spirit. Then it says, and of the joints and marrow. In other words, he goes deep down. The word of God can travel deep down into your very marrow. The very cells in your body can be inundated with the word of God. You went to the hospital. You were told you got cancer in your bones, in your marrow. You got colon cancer. You got any kind of cancer. Hey, you can direct the word of God and it can travel to that exact spot and burn it off and cut it off your life. You can do it. And we're here to show you how. He says the word of God also is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Oh, this is big. That means through the word of God, you can know what someone is thinking. You can know the reasoning, the intention behind someone's actions. Verse 13. We're studying about how to know the voice of God. And our point number one is God's voice can never contradict his word. So we're looking at the word of God to find out what that word is. Verse 13. He says, Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. That means before the word of God, there's no being, there's no creature that is hidden. No species, nothing living that is hidden. I'd like to read um, this, but let's finish this. Then I'll read it for you from, from two other translations. It will bless you. Hallelujah. It says, But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of the one in whom we have to do. He says, The word, now he gives personality to the word. He says, The word has eyes, and there's nothing naked before the word. Let me read Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12 from the Passion Translation. It says, For we, for we have the living word of God, which is obaloko praktefike de yas. It says, which is full of energy. The word, the living word of God, he says is full of energy, like a two-mounted sword. It will even penetrate to the very core of our being, where soul and spirit, bone and marrow meet. It interprets and reveals the true thoughts and secret motives of our hearts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Read the, the next verse. Verse 13. It says, There is not one person who can hide their thoughts from God. For nothing that we do remains a secret and nothing created is concealed. 
but whatever, but everything is exposed and defenseless before his eyes. To whom we must render an account. Let me read it to you from from the Amplified. Oh, hallelujah. It is for the word of God is living and active and full of power, making it operative, energizing, and effective. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. It says the word of God is living. He's alive. He's alive. He's active and full of power, making it operative, energizing, and effective. Then it says, it is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating as far as the division of the soul and spirit, the completeness of a person, and of the bo- and of both joints and marrows, the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and judging the very thoughts and intentions of our hearts verse 13 it says and not a creature exists that is concealed from his sight but all things are open and exposed and revealed to the eyes of him with whom we have to give account hallelujah so you got to learn the word. Knowing the word is knowing the person of God. Because you see, a man is defined by his word. A man is known, his character is known by the words that he speaks. And so when you know the word, you can tell. If this voice you're hearing, this thing talking to you, if it is God or not, I'll give you simple, simple examples. Here you are, you wake up in the morning, you're driving to work, or you're in school, and all of a sudden, you have a premonition, you have an urge, you have a push to get your parents something a gift whatever it is you're trying to resist that listen the only the only personality we find from the scriptures that's a giver is god so the urge to give did not come from yourself it did not come from the devil. Hell no, the devil will never tell you to give, not to God, not to anyone. The devil will show you how to spend money on useless stuff. Things that will destroy you. So you don't contemplate that art to give in church to others. That arch to help, you don't contemplate it. It's got to be the God element inside. You know what? The more you respond to that voice, to that arch, to that leading, to that prompting, the clearer his voice becomes to you. You got to learn to know his voice in small matters of your life. Then you can begin to graduate to big decisions. It's a learning. It's a learning. In John chapter 1 verse 1, it tells us in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him, in the Word was life. And that life became the direction, the light of man. Brothers and sisters, Knowing his voice is knowing his word. 
So what do you do? Get into the Word. There are several other ways God speaks to us, but every other way I'm going to discuss with you beginning from next Sunday has its qualifier from the Word. Because if you if you receive a word and information, anything, and it doesn't line up with God's word, then it is definitely not God. No matter how good it sounds, no matter how excellent it sounds, it's definitely not God. And I'll show you from the Bible. So look forward to next week Sunday service. We'll look at several other ways that we can recognize God's voice and God can talk to us. I just give you the broad topics or subjects and we'll go into details next week Sunday. Number one, God can talk to you through dreams. But is that still possible today? We'll find out from the Word. Number two, God talks to us through visions. What's the difference between a dream and a vision? I'll show you next Sunday. Number three, God talks to us through men, through others. How do I know when that advice I'm getting from my wife or from my daughter or from a friend or from a fellow minister is God? Or they're advising me out of their own self-love or self-preservation, or self-interest. How do I know? Even though it's a great idea, how do I know this is God? I'll, I'll show you. So I said, God speaks to us through others. And when we're talking others, the three categories of others, you have superiors or mentors, you have equals or colleagues, then you have subordinates or mentees. God can use any of these three to talk to you. Number four, God speaks to us through circumstances and situations of life. And number five, God speaks to us through nature. Of course, when we're dealing with the direct communication with God, we're going to deal with the in, the inward witness. God giving you a premonition, a nudging from inside to do certain things. We're going to look at all that beginning from next week. So the whole month that we're entering, the month of August, is going to be, at what I told you, in our spiritual growth season. Okay, so we're learning God's word that will help us as individuals walk circumspectly in these last days so that we're not deceived we're not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine okay and we are going to get deeper and deeper go deeper next week and see more things from god's word and we are going to be so changed and excited i'm so glad you took our time today to be with us i'm excited and thank god for you um if this is your first time joining us, ensure if you're watching from YouTube or you're watching from Facebook, click the like, click the follow, click the subscribe button, whichever platform you're watching on, and ensure that when we send out posts for a, a couple, maybe two weeks or more, now I've not sent out any daily posts like I used to. The reason is because we're working on something very exciting I'm going to I'm gonna announce to you very soon, okay? We're, we're creating... Uh, we're doing something the Lord told us to do when we started in in um, 2020, uh, around this time 2020, interestingly, that's when the Lord um, opened my eyes and showed me something we needed to do with urgency. And we began working on it with urgency. And now it's almost at completion. And I'll, I'll share that with you very soon. So um, I'm not posting right now because we're giving so much attention to finishing that up and we can start posting from there and sharing on all platforms. Praise God. But we're so glad that you took our time today to join us. The Spirit of God rests on you, increase you, prosper you. Make this week a week filled with testimonies. Testimonies of His grace, His love, His goodness, His power. 
in your life. If you're sick in your body, I release healing on you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, you are healed from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet to the tips of your toes. The power of God is working in you right now. Begin to do what you cannot do before. See with your eyes. Hear with your ears. Stand up and walk. Stand up and walk. Yes, the power of God is traveling through your body right now. Blessed be God forevermore. We worship you. We're looking forward to hearing from you. We'd like to hear your testimonies. And show that you, you can send it in the mail. P.O. Box 1711, Sun City, Arizona. 85372 is our mailbox. And you can also email us, prayer at whatculture.org. Thank you so much for taking our time to join us today. If you are a member of this ministry and God has laid it in your hearts, or you're just watching, or you're partnering with us, and God has laid it in your hearts to give to what we're doing, if you're in the United States, you can give by texting what culture to 77977 or you can text what culture to 833-245-5523 and you'd be able to send us um, your offering sow your seeds and do whatever the lord has laid in your heart you're giving internationally you can go to our website www.give.whatculture.org and you can give from there or you can do that also from pay, PayPal. PayPal, our PayPal handle. Let me see here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Our PayPal handle is PayPal. PayPal.me slash what culture. Okay. Look for us and give through these, and you will, the Lord's going to bless, increase, and prosper you as you do. Again, thank you so much for taking time to be with us today. Until we see you next week, Sunday, same time, same place. Don't you ever forget it. The Word of God is living, it's active, and is working in you. God bless you.